Yes, well, I am Miguel Castrillo for the, from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. I work in the Earth Science Department of the Supercomputing Center. And this is a presentation made in collaboration with, from, with Dorotea Jovino from CMCC and Clement Brico from Mercator Ocean. In this presentation, we talk about the NEMO and ECR models prepared for the configurations for the very high resolution production experiments. These are configurations that have been prepared in the framework of EC, EC Waste 1 and EC Waste 2 projects, which are the, the organizers of this, of this workshop. So we think that is really appropriate. And the idea is to show you how we deal with the, with all the challenges that uh, poses running these models, operational models that have a, a, a very long story and have been developed from the 80s or the 90s in modern HPCs and watch, watch actions are needed to, to, to exploit the capabilities from the new architectures and new machines to take, well, to cover the cities and also make uh, advanced designs by improving the solution and process representation and so on. So, well, I will, the presentation is divided into the two models, but as you will see, there is a tight relation between them because in fact, NEMO is part of the ECR model. The ECR model is the coupled one, it's simulating both the atmosphere and the ocean, and NEMO is the ocean component. And both of them were developed develop and tested this uh, super, very high resolution configurations in the, in the easy ways project. So, well, to start, I'm going to start talking about the, the ECR part. So, the, the ECR model is a coupled model. Well, that means that it has different model components, and in this case, the configuration that we are uh, using and improving is the global uh, circulation model, which is atmosphere plus the ocean. So in this case, in the ECR model version three, the atmosphere uh, was uh, simulated by the IFS system, uh, developing the ACMF, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, and the ocean and the ACE components uh, are simulated by using NEMO and, and NIMO. NEMO is the, the, the ocean nucleus, it's a community model, the same as the ECR1. And LIM3 was the model used at, at that time in said NEMO. It was the most popular and the one included in the, in the main NEMO repository. Also, this has been evolved at the same time. So we have the atmosphere, we have the ocean, but we need to communicate both components in order to be run together. And that's why we need a coupler. In this case, the coupler is OASIS. The coupler is in charge of interchanging the fields between the both components taking care of the remapping between the two grids because as you can see in the image we have different grids and even different resolutions so the copper has to deal with this mapping and also to deal with the necessary interpolations to transform fields from one grid to the other and a little bit explanation about the ECL model well as you can see well there is this big graph with all the components that uh, ECR may have, because well, ECR has different configurations. So, as I was telling, we are now using the GCM, which is the global circulation model. This is maybe the simplest. Also, it is using the, the the most important components, which is atmosphere and the ocean. But there are also additional configurations, like the one uh, simulating the carbon cycle or or chemical atmospheric chemistry. So in the, inside this component, inside this modeling system, we can include uh, the dynamic vegetation. We can include atmospheric in chemistry, biogeochemistry in the ocean, uh, ice, ice sheet models for uh, Greenland. Also the, the run of mapper, which is uh, interchanging the, the river information from the atmospheric model into the, into the ocean. So well, there's a lot of components that can be added. And these components are, in getting increases in number with with the years and as a result the model is getting more complex and more complex and all these studies that we do to increase the efficiency and to improve the models are of course getting in complexity because you have to work in several components at the same time but also in the integration of that uh, components together and well it's important to say that the the this uh, easier system as i was saying is a Community model, so it's a community model modeling framework in Europe for the, for this couple system, and it has more than thirty partners institutes, which them all eight of them are core partners, which are those in the list, and it's organized in several work groups dealing with the different different 
components of, of this system. So the technical uh, tuning and simit, the atmospheric composition, climate relations. So this is working in an organic way, but then we do like yearly, yearly uh, workshops and there is a steering group designing everything and so on. Well, this is a community and we work with this, with this container. So, well, uh, some words about uh, efficiency in earth science models. Well, we know that uh, the increase in the resolution and, and running bigger configurations is, is very critical in earth science models. There is a need to increase the resolution to represent better the, the processes in their system and also to, 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 to resolve the processes that are being parameterized right now, for example. But the problem is that these memories are very hungry in terms of memory and computational resources and I.O. So data handling is becoming an increasing bottleneck. And future simulations, well, we can say that we are in the future right now at the time that this exercise was being made. And we need much more resources. So we can see that, for example, ORCA2, the, the, this small configuration on the left, is a, the default uh, uh, supported by the NEMO system. It's the smallest one, and it has more or less uh, 0 0.84 million points and the next one which is the current high resolution is like two order of magnitudes above and orca 12 which is the one in this uh, that we i will we will talk about in this couple system is like one order of magnitudes above and orca 36 that is the one that we will talk for the nemo system standalone is another order of magnitude before so when we increase the resolution, we have one order of magnitude, and, and this is not negligible because, as we were saying yesterday in the performance section, a, a small overhead can become a, a nightmare in, in when you jump at the resolution. And you need sometimes to change the way that you are doing the, the model calculations and the algorithmic parts and, and the way that you, in general, uh, overcome this problem. So, well, talking about the specific configuration, so in the in the framework of Easy Ways project, uh, it was decided to do different different demonstrators or configurations to prepare the different modeling systems in Europe for the for the Excel scale. And in the case of ECR, it was decided to to uh, develop a 10 kilometer a, a configuration in the order of 10 kilometer for a couple of systems. So we have the difficulty here that we are working on two models at the same time that need to uh, work at the same time and interchange information with them. The ECR3 uh, system was using IFS cycle 36, so this system is using nowadays and is the system that was used for the CIMIC 6 intercomparison project. And in the atmosphere, we have this IFS model with the T1279 configuration with 91 levels. So this is more or less 16 kilometer resolution. And for the NEMO uh, OSAN model, it was using the version 3 for the OSAN CIs and ORCA 12 with 75 levels, which is more or less 10 kilometers. So overall, it's a resolution in the order of 10 kilometers. And we see that we have like 2 million points for the for the atmosphere and 13 million points for the OSAN. And in general, we count the 3D space. So we also count the vertical levels. We have like 1,000 million, 1 billion vertices. So this, uh, very, very big configuration is very huge and, and it's a, a very good benchmark for modern computers. So well, once once we develop this configuration, we could test it in the in the minus two three supercomputer. Well, the, the result is that we were capable of simulating 60 days per day. So this means that uh, to simulate one year, you need six days. So, well, it's not really bad, but it's below the operational expectations because, well, in order climate experiments sometimes uh, need uh, 100 years or even 200 years. So you will need a time that is well, in practical terms, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, good. So that's why inside the, in the, we were working inside the Easy Waste project to improve this, this number. But well, these are some results from these initial uh, uh, runs, and we can see well that uh, the, especially in the ocean, this, 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 sorry, in the special in the atmosphere, which is the, the right image, the formation of these eddies and these these forms here that are not visible in a, in a coarser resolution. So, in jumping and increasing resolution is is good to resolve eddies at these scales, and it's something it's, a, it's some of the of the most the most signatures of this 
going to run at this resolution. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, I, well, sorry, I was watching a, a, a that there was a, an, a question. I, I can answer it right now. So we were using a 300 seconds ten step here to, to resolve the, the, the model at this resolution. So at this time, there was a time that we were uh, changing the, the HPC, our supercomputer, from milestone 3 to milestone 4. This was in 2017. That more or less the every node has a tri triple replicated capacity with respect to milestone 3. And the whole system has 10 times more power. So, well, also uh, increasing network that is very important for our models. That at this case, when you scale the model, they do a lot of communication. So, to have a better network for sure increase, should uh, increase the, the throughput. So, we did a new scalability minus room four, and we saw that well, we could reach even half a year per day, which is uh, it's like three times better or that the, the, the one that we were doing so well. By only changing the, the supercomputer, I think it's a it's a, it's a good a good mark. And in the milestone four and after doing a new load balance analysis, because you have to take into account when, that when you change the configuration, every every model here has a different uh, every every model needs a different time for the to do the the data step. So we are running with 300 seconds time step in all the models, but for example, the NEMO model needs to run the ICE model every two steps. For example, the IFS model uh, executes the radiation functions every five steps, so they don't have a regular time step duration. And when you are copying these models, you have to take into account all of these things. And that's why uh, the copper Oasis, for example, has a nice tool that is helping us to, to balance these configurations. But no matter how bad would you do it, in the case of VCR, you are always losing uh, some amount of time. And what you're trying to do is to lose uh, the, the, the less time possible. But, but as you see here, well, we can even run 160 days per day. So this is three times the, the, the throughput that we were getting in Western 3 and almost uh, 0.5 years per day. For, this means that for a 100-year experiment, we need 27 million computing hours. Well, you have to take into account that price projects, which are the biggest allocations uh, done in, in Europe for scientific projects, are usually uh, giving among uh, between 40 and 50 million computing hours. So 100 emulation for, for the system will consume almost a, a, the whole price project. So this is a, a something that is not negligible, absolutely. So uh, I wanted to introduce this slide to highlight that this configuration that we created was not only a, a, a benchmark for, for computing system and the Pexel scale HPCs, because they were used also in production. So there are two projects, Primavera and Hydra Smith. The first one was devoted to create a new generation of uh, high resolution global climate models, so to test these models in production and see the improvements that you can get by raising the resolution in, in, in the model configurations. And the high res MIP was replicating the CMIP6 protocol, but for high resolution uh, simulations. And this model, this configuration, and this model was factoring in both these projects. And at the end, we can see that there is a tight relation between all of these ecosystem in the by the projects in the H2020 framework. So we have easy ways and IOCNES that are supporting the application infrastructure and giving support to the applications to improve and to use the, the new HPC systems. We have the praise project, which is the one in, in charge of the research infrastructure and allocating hours for the research projects. And we have Primavera, which is a climate project studying the results from running these simulations in these in these supercomputers, and at the end, the community benefits from all of this. So we are able to integrate the the, the three different projects from three different nature and and, and have a, a feedback from all of them in, all together, and, and 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 the inputs from one project into the other are always beneficial because Primavera made us aware of the necessities that we have to to create the model and and so on. 
And some of the scientific objectives that we were trying to accomplish inside these projects is, for example, to evaluate high resolution climate models at process level. So we study the, the, the processes, how the processes level uh, improve by increasing the solution, by separate and focus especially on the IFC interaction. So in this zone, when the, the air and the ocean uh, meet each other in the in this uh, the sea surface, for example, and the and the atmospheric uh, boundary layer, well, to see how this process interacts and, and which is the, the result of increasing uh, resolution at this scale. And these are some plots of the results. As you can see, well, you can see the, the, the ways and the edits that are really resolved at, at this scale. So this, this computation is, is uh, in, enough to, to resolve edits in almost all the, all the planet, not in all the latitudes, but in most of them. And, and you can see that in, in these plots. And this is the North Latin region, and you can see this nice edits here. So, well, at the end, but what, what was the, the because as, as you saw in the scalability plot, well, uh, we were achieving one, uh, half a year per day, but there was a point that the model was not uh, scaling well. We were losing efficiency and well, we using, uh, doing an analysis using the performance tools where we, we got some conclusions. For example, the IO overhead, uh, in this case, the Nemo model is using was using an asynchronous IO server that was helping us to to do all the writing of the results asynchronously without stopping the model execution. But the IFS model, the atmospheric component, was not using an IO server and was doing all the output by the master process. It was also, of course, a bottleneck, and that's why we thought that interfacing IFS with the same XIOS asynchronous server was going to be beneficial. Also, we saw that the CA's scalability was not good. And when you scale the model a lot, the CI is, well, is a 2D model and needs to do a lot of communication. And when you use a lot of processes to resolve this, at the end, you are spending more time doing communication than computation. So this become a necessity. Also, there's the possibility to decouple the, the, the ocean and the ice and run them independently using OSIS to interface it. It's something yet to test in our system. And also, well, the model insisting the atmospheric uh, model that we were using is for 2010, and well, uh, in the in it was clear that in a newer version of ECR we were going to be we were going to need to 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 update the atmospheric model. So, well, you already saw how uh, fortunately you already saw yesterday. The, the, the lessons about performance analysis, but just to say that we are using these tools to look and to study the model's execution. And this is how a trace of the ECR3 model looks like. So on the top processes, you can see the atmospheric model, and in the medium part, you can see the ocean model, and well, here in the bottom is the, the IO server. And well, this is a, the average MPA call duration, but what it's important here, besides the model is doing a lot of communications to all the execution, is that you are seeing these black parts at every ocean time step. And this is what I was saying before. So, well, we try to, to balance the model's time steps the best as possible, but there is always gaps in which one of the model is waiting for the other. And we try to minimize these, these weights in order to exploit the, all the, the, the allocation the best as possible. This is the bar efficiency. So, Blue colors mean long computations, and as you can see, there are regions in which the two models are doing a lot of communications. And finally, MPA coloration again, but and this is a, a, a zoom on, on one of the on one of the time steps. So well, uh, this was the, the first version of the configuration, and well. Uh, after Easy Ways 1 came the second uh, part of this project, Easy Ways 2. It's a, a new project and was the main, one of the main uh, targets of this project, or, or one of the work practices of this project, is to uh, bring the configurations developed by the previous project to production mode. That means to raise the, the throughput uh, uh, speed and make them uh, run at the that phases or throughputs that are enough for production mode. In this case, and be able to run these uh, massive configurations at one simulated year per day. 
So this has different steps. You cannot do this jump from one day to the other. So that's why there are the different steps are first to develop the infrastructure for the production mode configuration. So in, it's not just to generate two com, new, new configurations. You need to address the bottlenecks and generate new components and new infrastructures and systems that help you to, to increase the modeling capacity. And this was the first step. And the points that were decided to improve was the coupling infrastructure by means of OASIS, improvement of the IO by trying to use the XIO server in, you know, in all the model components and also improving the, the XIO itself. Um, improving the NEMO capacity to run in higher resolutions and also uh, improve the infrastructure for high resolution data. And well, this step was already uh, more or less accomplished, and we are in the second in the second phase, which is develop the configuration system. So, in the case of ECR, well, uh, there is a new model which is ECR four, with the first version was released this year, and we are now talking about the ECR four very high resolution couple demonstrator. So the resolution is the same, but you can see that there are some changes. So the I phase model is no longer IFS in, in ECR. The demonstration model is now open IFS, which is the cycle 43. So we are jumping seven cycles or, or seven num version numbers, because I think the 42 was not existing and separate numbers. No? And we are using a different grid, the TCO69. But even the number here is 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 a smaller, we are using the same, the same we are having the same resolution. This is because, well, the, the grid before was having a linear triangular truncation, and now it is a octahedral grid with a radius of Gaussian. And this means that with a less number of grid points, we can simulate the, the, the same the same, the same resolution. And this is a, a good improvement. And this was one of the, uh, uh, one of the, the, the paths that well, made us aware that we need to, to to update the, the FS model. In the case of Nemo, we are using Nemo version four that brings all the all the improvements from Easy Ways and also from from the Emerge project. We are using exactly the same configuration for Nemo. So uh, some of the main main assets of the new configuration and modeling system is that we have a brand new ESM, as I was saying, with the, an updated atmosphere model, an updated and model are completely new CIS model because well the Lean 3 was renewed and was merged with other models being used in the NEMO community and we have a new totally new CS model that scales much better and a new version of the of the coping infrastructure. We also have a common asynchronous IO server. So now the open IFS model is interfaced with with XIOS so we can uh, uh, output all the data from the couple system using the same uh, IO servers. We have the Autodidal Reduced Gaussian Grid, as I was saying, that allows us to increase the resolution using the number of, of computations and the possibility to switch uh, the numerical precision. That is going something that is going to be assessed in this project to run these models in single precision and for the atmosphere and mixed precision for the ocean and see where the benefits in terms of computational performance and also well, the, 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 the validity of the data at this resolution. So um, in order to develop this new configuration, well, we had to follow different steps for the ocean. As we were using the same grid, we could adapt the, the previous configuration, but of course, new parameterizations and new, new options are, are needed. For the atmosphere, we generated new initial conditions using the Isimbra model system. And for the coupler, well, as we are using a different grid, we need to generate again all the files and all the inputs needed for the, for the coupler. Well, well, it's good that there is a, a tool that helps us to create the coupler grids, mask, and areas. And using a new feature in Oasis, which is which allows us to generate the remapping weights in parallel, this task that was taking days in practically is now taking only a few hours to generate all the remapping ways to interchange the information between the both leads. So, well, this is one, for example, how the ORCA 12 bathymetry looks like. This is one of the, the, the data 
that we could reuse. And well, it's important to say it because to generate this kind of information, for example, a new bathymetry is a process that takes takes time because it's not only taking information, you need to a small some areas in order that the model is stable and so on. So we need well, this is uh, and, and this is this shows some how, how these final resolutions represent uh, a lot of detail and well it's also important to have the the input information and the topographies at, at high scale to to at the end the, the, take the benefits from improving the resolution because it's not improving the resolution of the models but also taking forcing or taking input data that also is impaired of the resolution and well to visually represent which is the challenge in this project so at the, at the, at the top this is a speed up that we were getting with the first uh, version of the configuration so almost half year per day and this is what we are trying to get in this new project so one year per day so we try to double the speed and even the younger data and what we, I, I can show you for now is the scalability for the only the, the ocean standalone component. So this is scalability for the NEMO, the NEMO model. At this resolution, and we see that the NEMO model is now able to, to run at more than three years per day with 10,000, 12,000 processors. So, well, this is a good sign that with the, all the improve, improvements in terms of coupler and IO, that we will be able to get over the the one simulated years for the couple system. We are now in the process of finishing the, this configuration. So we already deployed the configuration in the new system, Manson 4. We already created this configuration with an initial parametrization that of course will be fine-tuned. We generated all the necessary data to interchange information between the two grids. We did test runs and we test the output generation. We can do output from the two models at the same time using the XIO servers. And now we are in the step of fine tuning the model parameters and doing a an spin up because, well, you cannot start, uh, someone was asking about the time step, you cannot start running at the 300 seconds time step from the beginning because there are, uh, there's a shock between the initial conditions from both components at this resolution and you need to do a small spin up of maybe one year to able to be able to raise the time step. So at this moment we are running with 100 second time step to generate these initial conditions. And this is how the sea surface temperature looks after one month. You can see the detail in this plot. And well, I wanted also to, to mention that, well, in order to run this model, it's not just running the model in the in the HPC. For production runs, well, this involves managing all the data that is produced from this model and storing and uniforming it. So we have workflow managers that help us to run these models. And as you can see, there are a lot of steps involved and each time you uh, develop a new model version and even new configurations you have to modify and maintain all of these steps from the model setup model deployment data preprocessing simulation output preprocessing verification and diagnostics. so there is a lot of work behind of this more than the pure scalability and the pure model development and some conclusions from this easy earth uh, new configuration part is as well Within Easy West project, we develop and share among the easier construction this 10 kilometer configuration. The project is untested in the BSC. We use it in production for different projects and use it to investigate very high resolution scalability. And in, for this new production mode configuration, well, I think we think that it solves the main bottlenecks and uses updated model components. Will be deployed and tested in the MPEX scale every HPC system once that the configuration is ready and the systems are to ready. And we allow running efficient, very high resolution uh, simulations with production software. Okay, so that was the first part of the presentation. And now I'm going to go to the, the NEMO part. This is uh, shorter than before. And well, some of the information that I was introducing for NEMO is also valid for this one. So, it's going to be like 15 minutes more. So, well, uh, some uh, we wanted to in, to give some words about uh, the NEMO model and the importance of the NEMO model in, in in general because well, the Copernicus Marine Services, uh, well, the 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 aim of these services to improve the the ocean forecasting systems and well, as you can see in this map, uh, there are several different. The world is divided in different regions to give these marine systems and services and 
there is also a global region, of course. But as you can see, Nemo is well, like omnipresent, is featuring in most of the of the regions from the Mediterranean, from the global system, from the IB region. So this is a, a model that is using most of the in European uh, climate centers, but it's also used by CIMEMS for many of the areas that it represents. So some ideas about how we can improve uh, the, the, the mining service and the products given by ocean forecasting. So one thing is to improve the ocean numeric representation by improving data simulation systems with new observing platforms. So including the observations is important, including data simulation is important, to inject detailed data into the model and also so that the model can use this data better to, to, to perform the integrations. So some ways that this can be done is to increase the amount of observations to enhance the accuracy, the time and space resolution of the observations and the description of final scales. But we also need to improve the numerical model. And why, why, why we need to increase the numerical, to improve the numerical model? Sorry to represent the circulation in open ocean, to represent the energy transfer between the finer and larger scales, to understand the contributions of the different scales. And well, it is important, especially to resolve scales below, and below 100 kilometers, and in particular, sequence scale processes from one to 50 kilometers. So, well, um, uh, how can we, in practical, uh, increase this, this is this scale result, result. So, well, one way is to improve the ocean regime by increase of the grid resolution, by simply increasing the resolution. So we have different resolutions here in, in this table. So what we call the permitting is one quarter of the degree, which is that from 20 to 25 kilometers. So at this scale, as you can see in the plot, you can see some eddies, but are not really resolved. In all the in all the latitudes, so we have the idea resolving resolutions like the one twelve degree that is the same that we were talking about in the previous presentation, and then we have submersible scale permitting, which on top of the main eddies there are also sub eddies being resolved as you can see in this plot of the South Africa region. And this simul this one thirty six resolution is simulating from two to three horizontal resolution, and the idea is to operate this this resolution in in CMIMS from 2024. So, but it's not only to increase the grid resolution and increase the model capability to run this resolution. You also have to improve the model itself, to improve the physics, the parameterizations, and improve the numerical representation of the model. Include higher order schemes for advections and so on. And also it's important when you run the model standalone and you don't have a couple of model, you need to introduce the atmospheric fields during runtime, and this is what we call atmospheric forcing. So increasing the space and time resolution of this forcing is of course beneficial because it's the same as in the couple system you were in, increasing the, the, the resolution of the atmospheric component. So, well, practically how you can do this increase of this resolution and in general run models at high resolution. So this involves more operations, more memory access, more memory capacity and more I.O. So well, more about everything in computational terms. So what we need to do, to adapt the model to new architectures, to run in the pre scale systems and SSL systems, improve the operations throughput, because it's not only adapting models to run, but also exploiting the parallelization and exploiting uh, accelerators and exploiting all the improvements that these new computer facilities bring with them. To improve the exploitation of memory hierarchies, to improve communications, improve IO. So we have to improve the computational capability in different in different vectors. That's why, well, there are two projects that were very important for Nemo with regards to this. One is the Easy Ways to Projects, and the second one is the Inverse. Inverse was another 2020 project devoted only to Nemo, and also so it was. Uh, also trying to improve the Nemo reference code, uh, uh, looking to exploit future HPC technologies, but was very focused in the context of CIMIM system. So it's not only to improve the model itself, but also to develop downstream services and to increase all the chain from the model execution to finally giving the service to the users. 
and the idea is to develop NEMO to develop uh, to give ocean state estimates and forecasts at kilometer scale. So this really focuses on kilometer scale and interactions between processes at this scale. So in this case, the ORCA 36 high resolution configuration was used as a, as a bench. So this configuration is on one order of magnitude above the one that we are using in the in the couple model mentioned before. In order to benchmark and test this configuration, there is a price project that is running right now in which 24 million hours were obtained. And the objective of this project is to test the HPC developments on MO4 and also perform multi-year handcuffs for set with the easing AMMF high resolution high frequency IFS dataset. So testing the model using high resolution atmospheric forcing and compared to handcuffs without and with tidal forcing. And of course, disseminate the results. This configuration is based on MO4, the same as in the ECR case, and it's an horizontal. Uh, it, it has two, three kilometer horizontal resolution with a very big number of points with the new CI3 model for the for the CIs, a bathymetry based on JEPCO 2019 and this new forcing data set that I was mentioning. To start, some scalability was done. Uh, to start before the project, the model was a subject of scalability studies and we did some analysis here in the in the Barcelona supercomputer in the Manhattan Four supercomputer. Well, the, the, here the numbers are really small, but well, the main idea you can take from this plot is that the model can scale well up to fifty thousand cores, and at that point the model well should continue scaling, but well, the machine has problems to, to scale the model. So it's I, we think that is not the model itself. It's that we are using seventy percent of Mare Nostrum, and the model has problems to scale here. So this is something that is important because well. The, 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 the scaling capacity doesn't increase linearly with the resolution. Higher resolutions, you are using more fractions of the HPC systems and you are starting to see new problems that you don't see at lower resolution. And one idea for this plot is that using single precision or mixed precision can be useful to increase the scalability. So we can get even 0.9 years per day using 50,000 processors. And this impact of the eyes that there is some impact has been decreased a lot in comparison with M3. So this CI3 model uh, has uh, a lot of potential in terms of scalability. And these were some well, outcomes that we got from the computational analysis. Uh, but what we can see in general from these slides is that the parallel efficiency decreases when we scale the model. But given that this is a very huge resolution, when we reduce the size of the subdomain, we also gain a lot of computational performance. So the gains in computational performance compensate the losses in parallel performance. And that's why we get this superlinear speed up up to 50,000 processors. And we were expecting to continue seeing an scale, the model scaling here, but well, the, there is one point that there is a bottleneck in the computation when you are using a big fraction of the system. And this is the time of the solution for uh, operational runs of this model. So this model uh, was the first, the simulations were started to run in the Metro France Atos World computer. And we can see that in practical, in operational, when adding output and adding the, the final parametrization and options, with 50,000 cores, they needed like uh, one hour 20 to simulate five days. So well, in practical, this is like 0 0.2 simulated years per day. And well, the finally, uh, this is these are the HPC developments that are going to be tested in these uh, configurations, and that have been developed both in the Easy Ways 2 and in the Immerse project, and try to address all the different uh, all the different uh, subjects inside the 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 inside the computation that we have to improve to increase the resolution of this model. So first, the tiling, using tiling, which is catch blocking techniques and use the fusion to, in, to better use the memory hierarchies and memory access, increase halos and reduction introduction of MPI3 to decrease the cost of communication, use mixed precision to decrease the computational cost and memory consumption, compute diagnostics on GPUs to improve the scalability, and uh, XIOS servers are being used, but uh, activist model restart reading and writing from XIOS are used to level 
of service index IOS can improve the IO performance. So all of these components of computational aspect that need to be improved are being tackled in this in this project, price project that we are now running. So that was all. And well, I hope it was not very long. There were a lot of information. So well, I saw that there were some questions that we have 10 times to address, I guess. So, well, okay. I see that. Yes, oh, Julian. Thank you very much um, for your talk. So there were a couple of questions. Yes. So let's start with the questions. And first question is from Tara Brazat. Can you please also so say how big is the time step and how long it needs in BCS to compute a time step? Yeah, so this is the one that I think that I just stopped to answer, but yes. So as I was saying, when we start developing these configurations, we cannot directly use a, a big time step. We run with a 120 seconds time step, but when once we, that we generate initial conditions, we can increase the time step to 360 seconds, which is six minutes. This is more or less the maximum that we can that we can run. And how long it needs? Well, depends the number of processes that you are using and I don't have the numbers in mind but I think that one second time step is like a half a year per day so well to, to you need to to reduce the time of a time step below one second to, to, to achieve the throughput that we want all right uh, um, yeah sorry so the next question is um, how much improvement by changing from double to single precision in general? I mean, maybe the issue was here that the X axis of, of the different graphs that you had, that they were differently scaled, so it was not quite clear. Um, maybe, uh, yes, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, well, here the Y axis changes a little bit, it's, but well, it's important to say that, uh, well, in the, uh, when you start the scalability, the points here are very close, but in fact, the improvements by adding single precision are more when there's not a lot of communication involved. This is well, this is logical because the single and mixed precision help mostly with the computations, the speed of the computations, and also the memory access. And we can get even one eighty percent eighty percent improvement at the beginning of the of the scalability, and at the end of the scalability we get between 20 30 percent improvement so in general well I, I we can say that you can expect like a 50 percent improvement in general terms but it may it depends on the number of resources that you are using uh, the extension of this precision because in nemo we are not running the full model and single precision we have a method to distinguish which parts of the model can be moved to single and which parts of the model have to be respected to single Okay, great. Yeah, I think I didn't even spot that that there were two the two lines what they meant because it's very small, but wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, Ciano, Ciani also wanted to ask um about the IO overhead in general. Um, yes, <laughs> this is a yeah. This is well, it is a it's a good question. So well, the IO overhead. In the in the case of ECR three, as I was saying, we have one problem that the IFS component, the atmospheric component, the, the in the ECNMF they use uh, an asynchronous server, but in ECR we don't have accessibility to these uh, these IO servers. So in the ECR three version, we were not using any IO server for the IFS model, and the the, the overhead was huge. Now that we are using XIOS for both the ocean and atmosphere, well, there is less overhead but still we count that there is like a 20 percent uh, overhead when you run uh, uh, the models with xios and run 3d and, and, and generate sorry 3d the output at the key resolution of three kilometer when you run at the top resolution that we can run that is the one show this is like so up to 20 percent but well it depends a lot because depends on the frequency of the of the of the IO, it depends on the quantity of the IO. It's not the same outputting three D variables to the variables. On how many variables are you outputting? How you configure 
your IO servers, you can decide to generate one file with parallel NetCDF, generating one file from all the processes at the same time, or that each processes write their own their own file. You can also, depending on the configuration of the of the underlying file system, in industry you need to fine tune a lot of the configuration. In GPFS you don't. On the final the physical list, because in Amazon 4 we have the possibility to write in the local SSD disks and then move this data after the simulation. So well there are infinite ways to to but well to give a measure, yes, sometimes or in general we need to account for 20% more or less the overhead of the of the IO. Uh, 